Hello, everyone, and welcome to Stand Out from the Crowd, Build Your Personal Brand. My name is Dr. Lisa Andrews, and I am the manager of the Career Center at the CSP Board. I also like to recognize Fidelity Investments as the founding sponsor of the Career Center. And welcome you all today to this personal branding webinar. I'm so glad you decided to join us because this is definitely a timely topic and something that you should be focused on when it comes to your career and it has a lot of other applications as well. So let's go ahead and get started. So these logos should be pretty recognizable to you, and I, I would bet that each one of you on this webinar right now could name all of these companies. And if you'll notice, none of their names are posted on this slide, yet these brands are so powerful and so recognizable and have been promoted so much by these uh, organizations that a name isn't even really necessary. Think about when you're driving down the road and you see the golden arches. Uh, you know what that is. You don't have to look and say, oh, it's McDonald's. I'm going to stop there. Uh, you know it's McDonald's just by looking at the, at the uh, golden arches that are hanging above the building itself. Um, when you see the Target symbol, you know it's Target. And isn't that brilliant? You know, having a symbol that is your name as well is just even more instant recognition. And of course, we have Starbucks. And actually, recently, you'll note that they changed their logo. Originally, they had the name Starbucks Coffee in their logo, and it became so um, popular and so recognizable, that symbol of the female there, uh, without the name that they decided to drop it and say, hey, people know who we are. We don't even need to say our name anymore. And of course, we all know the Dallas Cowboys as well just by that star. Isn't that amazing that just a single star with those colors can evoke, you know, that's my team. That's who I'm rooting for. So all of these brands are just so recognizable that you don't even need the name to uh, identify who they are. Um, and and what, you, what branding does for these companies is it creates um, an expectation on your part. So you know what you're going to get when you interact with that brand. So for example, with McDonald's. You can be at a McDonald's in Topeka, Kansas, or you can be at a McDonald's in Tokyo, or anywhere around the world where we have McDonald's, and you're pretty much going to get the same thing. You know that when you order french fries, they're going to taste the same in Tokyo as they do in Topeka. Because what McDonald's is promoting is consistency. Consistency in their products across whatever McDonald's you go to throughout the world. Same thing with Starbucks. You know when you walk into a Starbucks, and I've been in a Starbucks in Germany, and believe it or not, they took my order in English. I said, ice grande soy latte, and I got my ice grande soy latte just like I would have if I walked a block from my office in Washington, D.C. and ordered the exact same thing. Pretty amazing. So these brands are delivering on consistency, and they're delivering on what they say they're going to give you. The same goes for you. You are a brand. But let's find out more about that. What is your brand? And what is a personal brand? So we know that these companies have their brands. We know they have their logos. And, and logos are everywhere. Everywhere you go, you see them on advertising and just on buildings and everywhere. But let's think about what your personal brand is. And what it is is a unique professional identity. So every one of you out there are unique. And each of you have a unique brand to contribute to the marketplace. It's a coherent message. Remember that consistency, um, the expectation that a brand is going to deliver what the company or person says it's going to deliver. So it's a coherent message that's consistent. It sets you apart from others in your own company and your industry. So again, you are unique. Uh, there's only one of you, and there's only one brand that's associated with you. It helps you market yourself. So just as a brand helps a company market themselves and their products that they're selling, 
your brand is going to help you further your career and further your business. Now, success in branding comes from self-packaging. So your brand is sort of invented by you. It's the sum total of your professional experience, your personality, your values, your background, your skills, everything. Uh, and it's self-packaged. So it can be anything you want it to be. And if you have an online presence, you already have a personal brand, believe it or not. But is it the one you want? So we're going to talk a little bit later about knowing what your professional brand is and personal brand is already, and how you can rebrand yourself if necessary. So if you're online anywhere, you have a website or a Facebook account or a LinkedIn account, you have a brand. Now, why is it important to build a personal brand? Well, for one, you might be looking for a new job. So it's important to know how you're coming across and coming across in a certain way so that you can convey um, what it is you have to offer to get that new job. You may want to create a new business or promote the business that you're currently in. So you need to have a personal brand so that you can attach value to what it is that you're offering. You may want to achieve professional recognition. So this may come in the way of being named to a, a list of top advisors. Um, you may want to uh, earn a certain um, designation in your field and receive recognition for that. Um, you may want to be recognized publicly uh, for your accomplishments and your brand. So there are many ways that you can be uh, recognized uh, uh, with your achievements and with your brand. And remember, gone are the days when companies sort of manage your career and they tell you what your next step is going to be and how you're going to progress. Now you manage your career. So you're in the driver's seat. And with your powerful personal brand, you can kind of market yourself within your own company and control your destiny. So we'll talk a little bit more about promotions and so on as we go forward. But remember, you are in charge of your own brand and your own promotion. Competition is tight, as you all know. If any of you out there are currently in a job search, uh, you may have been on some interviews, some second interviews, some third interviews but yet you still didn't get the job because there was someone out there that edged you out. There was someone out there that just maybe had a little bit more uh, to offer, which is a better fit for the employer. Um, so there is a lot of competition out there. So if you can distinguish yourself from others, you will be a more competitive candidate and finally win the job. And it matters in your personal brand to do what's important to you and reflects who you are. You want to be true to yourself. So um, you can't make this up. Your brand is who you are. It is your, the sum total of your experience. It is your, it reflects your values. Um, it reflects your, reflects your unique abilities, your special skills, the things that really set you apart from the person sitting next to you. And here are some career branding myths. Um, first, that branding is bragging, which it isn't. As they say, if you've done it, it ain't bragging. So I encourage you to be forthright about what it is you have to offer and be proud of who you are and what you have to offer. It's going to make your brand a lot stronger. So it's not bragging. It's simply promoting what's already there. Another myth, you could be seen as less of a team player. Um, this isn't true because everyone is promoting themselves. So you can still be a team player, yet you can represent yourself in the best way possible. Third myth, fourth, a third myth, it's only for the C-suite. So 
CEOs and COOs, CFOs, and so on, they're the only ones that really need a brand, right? Wrong. Everyone needs a brand. Um, it's not just for high-level executives. Even entry-level professionals need a brand, need to know who they are, and how they should be promoting themselves. The next myth. It's not really necessary for success. And this is probably the biggest myth of all. Um, you really do need to have kind of a coherent message that you're presenting, especially in a career brand and in a business brand as well. Remember back to Starbucks, Target, uh, the Cowboys, uh, and McDonald's. When you approach that vendor, you know what you're getting. It's that consistency. Um, and so to promote yourself and to be successful, uh, you want to have a coherent message and a message that is consistent. And finally, you're stuck with your current reputation as your brand. Any time, you can always reinvent yourself at any time. So whatever has come from your past is definitely one part of yourself and one part of your brand. But there's always room to rebrand yourself and reframe yourself. So, we, so moving forward, you need to really think of yourself as a brand. And here are some ways you can do that. Think about what you want people to associate with you when they think of your name. Is there a certain subject matter in which you want to be considered an expert? Are there general qualities you want to link to your brand? And you need to also know what is your distinct value. Again, that value proposition. So why go to Starbucks as opposed to someplace else to get that latte, an off-brand, let's say, or a smaller mom-and-pop coffee shop or something? Um, well, they have a specific kind of coffee that they're selling, and it tastes different than other brands, so it's distinctive. And so you're going to go to them because you like what they're offering. So again, people interact with a brand because they want something from it. They have an expectation. So people are going to have an expectation of you when they approach you. People want to extract value from brands. So again, you have to know and have to put forward what is your value proposition. What, what is the value that you provide? Are you creating a new professional relationship? So if, are you reaching out to have a partner in your business? Um, or are you networking, trying to build your network? Uh, you need to demonstrate to that other person what value you bring to the table. Are you providing access to your unique skills and expertise? This is your distinct value. Or could a new career opportunity be on the horizon? And what value do you offer your next employer? Or is a promotion a possibility? Remember, managing your career is your job, not the job of your company. So what I suggest is to conduct what I call a brand audit. Because remember I said earlier that if you're online anywhere, there's a brand for you. And people are um, either interacting with that or reacting to it or just being aware of what that is. So how do you know what your brand is? The first step is just to Google yourself and see where you're popping up and what is out there. You should really know what is being said about you or where you're popping up. What is associated with your name? Could be an organization, like an alumni association, it, it really a high school. I mean, it could be really anything. You should check your social media presence. And I will go into this a little bit more in a few minutes. And this is really important, too. Ask your network who they perceive you to be. 
So how are you coming across to your most trusted advisors, your most trusted inner circle? How are you coming across? I also like to call your network, and I'll mention this in a few minutes, your brand ambassadors. So not only are you a brand and you're self-promoting, but your network is really promoting you as well. You know, when someone comes to them and says, you know, I really need somebody to do this project. Oh, I know exactly the person. And then once you know what your brand is, you can work to promote it if you like what you see, or change it and rebrand yourself. So how do you do that? How do you build, how do you build your brand or rebuild your brand? You need to know what adjectives describe you now or how you'd like to be described. Do you want to be known as polished and professional, quirky and creative, friendly and approachable, trustworthy and honest, or corporate and serious? And there could be others. These are just some examples of how you could describe yourself, what adjectives you could use, and how you're coming across. And this is especially important. If you take nothing else away from this webinar, I hope you take this away. You need to know what your brand story is, or as we like to call it, your elevator speech. And what that is, think of riding in an elevator in a you know, 12 floor building. You're with someone meeting them for the first time, or you're sitting next to someone in an airplane. You're meeting them for the first time. How do you introduce yourself? What's your sort of 30 or 45 second elevator speech? Also, you need to know what or who is your target market. Is it customers or clients? Is it industry professionals and peers? Or is it potential employers? Because your brand, I would say it should be consistent across all of these target markets. So you want to make sure it's diversified as well so that you can appeal to all of these audiences. You can start with a very simple website. Um, I don't want to promote any specific website builder, but you've seen them on TV. There are plenty out there uh, that you can build. A very simple couple of page website, just getting your name up there, maybe a logo, uh, your contact information, and maybe a resume up there, or what your unique skills and abilities are, what you have to offer. Also, it's important to know what your connection is to other brands, going with the theory that birds of a feather flock together. So what are your associations? Think about it. Maybe schools you attended, your undergrad, your graduate degree, your high school maybe, uh, professional associations you belong to. That contributes to your brand. Civic associations, churches or synagogues, your current company any certifications you hold, and yes, CFP board. We are a brand, um, quite famous, as you know, um, and quite well trusted. So it's a good brand to be associated with. It's a good organization to be associated with, and that's why you're here. You also need to find opportunities to tap into to build your personal brand. And these could be speaking engagements or outreach. Think of those civic associations again. A lot of, you know, Lions Clubs or other civic associations have weekly speakers or monthly speakers. Try to get on that speaker circuit. Um, just give basic information um, that would be helpful to that audience. There could be press opportunities. Um, you should perhaps reach out to a public relations firm who can get you some press. You have something to offer that's, you know, interesting to a potential reporter, information that maybe no one else has, or expertise that you can lend. Um, when you connect with a public relations firm, you can sort of get on the press radar, and then when someone has a story uh, that they're doing, they'll look to you as an expert. So it's, it's really great to get some press, because you can certainly then put that on your website as well as on your resume. Blogging is also a great way to um, build your personal brand. Because again, you're putting sort of yourself out there. You're putting information out there about who you are and what you 
uh, what you offer, what you can offer. And last, volunteering. So any kind of, again, churches, uh, civic associations, even through your professional associations, there are committees you can join that are completely volunteer. You can even volunteer for the CFP board via volunteer positions open. Um, and that helps you build your brand as well. Because again, don't forget now you're expanding your network, your brand ambassadors. So all of those opportunities help to build your personal brand. You also want to refine your resume. So with your resume, your resume is, think about your resume as kind of your McDonald's logo. You know, it's, it's your golden arches. It's what you're putting out there uh, for people to see. It's who you are on paper in one to two pages. It's a snapshot, like a logo. It just gives people the basics, and then you can always expand when you meet them in person. And you want to focus on accomplishments instead of sort of responsibilities and duties. So look through those, what I call power statements or bullet points, um, and, and see what they say. Do they reflect an accomplishment or a product, or is it really a duty or a responsibility? And you really want to focus on accomplishments and make it as active as possible, make it as quantifiable as possible. So it's one thing to say you conduct staff meetings. It's another thing to say you conduct staff meetings with 30 people or supervisory involvement and that sort of thing. You want to eliminate any non-relevant information. And I'll say one of the areas that you can have a lot of non-relevant information is your volunteering. Some people have been members of boards or they were a member of a board 10 years ago, but they're not a member of that board anymore. So it's really not relevant anymore since it's in the past. Um, so take it off. And there could be other sort of older, more dated work experience, for example, that you definitely want to get rid of. So anything that's not relevant today, um, you want to take off the resume. Also, you want to add a branding headline to the top of your professional profile. So. Um, you know, at the very top of your resume, that very valuable real estate there under your name and contact information, you're going to have your professional statement or professional profile. But you can add sort of a branding headline to yourself. So, um, you know, financial advisor, basics. Um, some kind of branding headline that sort of encapsulates you, identifies you, gives you a brand. And then once it's complete, once it's been looked at, post it. Get it out there. Another thing you can do to build your brand is to get more training or education to solidify your brand and keep you current. Certainly any kind of certifications or uh, additional education, advanced education, and so on, really, really add to your brand. They give you credibility um, because you've um, pursued these certifications, you've pursued this education, so people know that you've dedicated yourself to your profession. Um, and it keeps you current. Know what you value and find employers that are in concert with that. So it's important that once you really know who you are and what your brand is, that if you are job searching, you really look for employers that um, are going to be in concert with that. So you don't want to feel like a fish out of water. You want to make sure that you and your employer are a good fit. And here they are. Be sure your brand ambassadors are communicating your brand effectively. So remember, again, when we talked about the brand audit, when you found out from your network or your brand ambassadors what they felt your personal brand was, then you may have to refine it with them and say, oh, really? I didn't realize you thought that. You know, this is really more what I had in mind. What do you think about that? And are you in agreement? And then can you be my brand ambassador and communicate that to others on my behalf? Okay, so let's get back to the topic of social media, and I have a little story to tell about this. So I was talking to someone recently who is in an active job search, and they had their initial phone interview, and everything was really going well, and you know they were wrapping up. And so the employer was saying to the person, you know, looking at next steps, uh, we're going to be doing some face-to-face -face interviews coming up in the next couple of weeks. In the meantime. We're going to be monitoring your social media accounts. So LinkedIn, Facebook, you name it. They're going to be looking. 
So is there anything that you know of right now that we should know about? So it's very interesting. Uh, employers are sort of doing their own investigative reporting behind your back, or they may be up front and tell you, as in this case, that they're monitoring you. So it's just so important to know how you're coming across. And that goes for tweets, Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat even, LinkedIn, you name it, employers could look at it. Or anyone can look at it. Anyone you're trying to impose your brand upon are going to check you out. And you are what you post. You are what you tweet. That represents who you are. So you need to just be really, really mindful of that. Maybe take a social media break if you're apt to post a lot. Um, but know that everything that's on there you know, is definitely searchable. People can find it and check it out. So in some ways, the die has been cast. But uh, you do need to be aware of what your presence is. You know, are you being presented in the best light? You know, just think before you tweet. <laughs> think before you post. Do you look professional? And if you were looking at your social media from afar, what would you say is your brand? How would you describe yourself? Is your brand consistent and identifiable? Again, like those brands I presented at the very, very beginning. And again, as I in this example that I gave you, is there anything that would require an explanation? Is there anything that could embarrass your employer? Anything that's sort of questionable? Would a post reflect badly on an employer? And certainly, you know, are you giving out too much information about that employer? Maybe they want the job search to remain confidential. OK. So just to recap, you've done a brand audit. You know what your brand is. You've reflected it on your resume. You've cleaned up your social media accounts. Now let's move to marketing your personal brand. They could develop some kind of tagline. And you know taglines for a lot of businesses that are out there. Um, this is especially good if you are uh, promoting a business, promoting your own uh, financial planning business or, and so on. And again, if you're branding a business, develop a logo. I don't know that individuals need logos, um, but certainly your website, the graphics on your website should re be reflective and create sort of an emotion response, an emotive response from the person viewing it. So you may want to consider what your graphics are on your website. And if you wanted to do a personal logo, you certainly could. Remember, people want to extract value from brands. So you need to know what value proposition you're presenting. Is it possible you're creating a new professional relationship? Or are you providing access to your unique skills and expertise? Could a new career opportunity be on the horizon? And what value do you offer your next employer? Is a promotion a possibility? You can call a meeting to discuss your unique contributions to the company. Remember I said a lot earlier, you know, companies don't manage your career. You manage your career. You need to take charge and let them know what your value proposition is. And now, at this point, I'd like to take questions. Um, and thank you very much for um, coming on to the webinar. I've enjoyed presenting. I hope you have found some value out of it as well. Um, if you do have questions, go ahead and type them into the um, question and answer um, window on the right-hand side. Um, and feel free to uh, contact me outside of this webinar as well. Um, that, and we can work on what your personal brand may be, um, work on your resume as well, work on the tagline, work on that um, 
the brand identity, and so on. And just so you know, the, the webinar is being recorded. So um, if there's someone you know um, that uh, it has missed the webinar, wants to sign up, or wants to view the webinar, they can certainly do that on our website. In about a week or so, it'll be posted. So let's take some questions. Um, there are a lot of questions coming in. Um, so let's see. Um, what's the time? Well, here's a good question. What's the time frame for relevant information on a resume? Um, for job experience, professional experience, the time frame is generally seven to ten years. Um, so that's where you want to go back. Um, so you want to sort of keep your experience pretty relevant, you know, pretty current. Same thing with any sort of volunteer opportunities or activities you've been involved in. Use the last seven to ten years as a bellwether. Okay, let's see. Uh, here's one. Um, what's a suggestion for dealing with bad reviews? Oh, very interesting question. Um, you know. Yeah, it's in the age of Yelp, <laughs> we are now subject to public criticism out there. Um, and uh, it's definitely out of your control as far as what people are going to post. So, you know, I think that uh, what I've seen people do is respond directly to the poster. So there's a place for you to do that. You can um, respond and say, you know, and, and, and address their concerns so that people can see that you're not just ignoring it, you're addressing it up front, and um, you are you're you're responding to it. So it's important to just be up front, and hopefully there will be more good reviews than bad reviews, and they'll sort of balance themselves out. Um, but yes, that's definitely um, uh, something that we have to deal with now in this age of um, of Yelp and so on. Okay, let's see some other questions. Would you advise having a separate set of social media pages for your professional brand? I think this is a great idea, actually. Um, the only problem is, you know, certainly you're identified on Facebook by your name. So if someone searches Facebook for your name, they may, both may pop up. So I still think it's important to be aware of what your social media presence is and make sure that it's cleaned up no matter where it appears. If it's your professional uh, Facebook page or LinkedIn page, um, or if it's your personal Facebook, personal Twitter, and so on, um, you know, you have to be, again, brand consistent. So you want to make sure that, you know, just like that McDonald's brand, you know in Tokyo you're getting that Big Mac, same thing. You want to make sure that everything looks clean. Okay, here's one. How do you suggest balancing personal and business topics within social media, particularly Twitter? Um, you know, if you're in a job search, honestly, my suggestion is to stay, stay away from social media, stay away from posting, stay away from tweeting. Um, uh, any kind of personal matters or information while you're in an active job search. Because again, they're going to be monitored, um, they're going to be looked at. So um, what you can do, if you, if you must <laughs> have the urge to send a tweet, um, make sure it's relevant to your, um, your business. Um, make sure it's something for a professional as opposed to, hey, my you know, daughter just won first place in 4-H or something like that. Um, just keep it as professional as possible. Okay, if you're just starting out, how do you give a value proposition if you have no immediate experience to back it up? What would be a good way to um, handle that? It's a great question. You know, certainly um, it takes time to build a brand. Um, McDonald's wasn't popular overnight, so it took time to, for people to recognize that there was that consistency, there was that guarantee of what you're going to get when you walk in the door. Um, but certainly, you know, if you're a new professional, um, 
you know, what you did in college matters, um, what your track record was, what your transcript looks like, and so on. That helps you with your brand. Um, so it's important to start to get involved. Um, be a super fan of your profession. I mentioned that in other webinars. Um, get involved. Start, start branding yourself. So yeah, so it does take time to build a brand. Um, but everything you've done before that contributes to that brand. So just think about that. Um, there's a brand for everyone out there, even if you are new. Um, and so it's just important to um, pull from all of your current experience, all of your background, your college years, your volunteer experience, and so on. OK, let's see. Um, Here's one that's very interesting, sort of piggybacking off of one of the former questions. Um, is it important to still keep personal and professional so social media posts separate and distinct? If part of my personal brand is a large focus on family values and incorporating that into financial planning? Very interesting question and a, and a good point as well. You know, certainly you're a human being and you're complex, and you certainly want people to sort of know that. Um, and if you want people to sort of be let in on your personal life and your personal business, um, then it's certainly OK to mix them. Um, some people are very sort of family oriented. Um, that's how they run their business. That's how they run their lives. Um, and certainly that's fine. Again, just being aware of what your personal brand is and knowing what you're going to be presenting and being consistent with that is completely up to you. So um, if it's your thought that you really want to incorporate the two together, certainly that's fine to do. OK, here's one. Can you give an example of an elevator speech? Sure. Um, I will give you one of my or my elevator speech. So I'm meeting you for the first time, and we're just sort of exchanging pleasantries. And so um, my elevator speech. I'm Lisa Andrews, and I am manager of the Career Center at the CFP Board in Washington, DC. I specialize in helping employers get their jobs posted on our website to provide opportunities for financial planners that are in the hunt. And I also help job seekers to refine their resumes and get ready for interviews and negotiating salaries. I enjoy my work very much, and I hope we can work together. So something like that. So just sort of the basics, who you are, what you're doing, and what kind of value proposition you can add. OK. We'll take one more question. Here's one. How much time do you spend on your brand weekly? So, you know, branding is kind of a, um, a, a it's sort of a constant process. You, know, you constantly have to be aware of what you're putting out there um, and just knowing um, how you're coming across. So, you know, really, with each meeting, um, with each interview, with each cover letter that goes out, um, each social media post that you choose to post, know that it's going to reflect on your brand. So just be careful, I would say, out there. Um, so it's important to definitely spend time on your brand and um, connect with your network, connect with those brand ambassadors out there. Um, you don't have to spend a lot of time on it, but just Kind of have it in the back of your mind. Now that you've heard this webinar, be aware. I'm sure it's raised your awareness. Gee, what is my brand? What's being portrayed about me out there? Um, so I don't necessarily think you need to spend a lot of time on it, but just raising your, it's just to raise your awareness that whatever you're doing and putting out there affects your brand. So again, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, good luck with building your personal brand and putting it out there in a positive way. And again, I'm here as a resource to help, so please feel free to reach out. Thank you so much.